Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Angel Leek. If you're new, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Today's video is going to be Yondu. He's one of my favorite characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, come on, he's Mary Poppins, y'all. Today's video will probably be a voiceover because it will take some time. But yeah, I'm super excited about this look. I hope it turns out well. It's really hard for me to pull off the look of a man. I've tried in the past, so we'll see how this goes. I've been like really in the zone creating these looks like this, especially Marvel or just characters or whatever. And if that's something you guys want to see, please let me know. This is going to be like a trial video because normally these types of videos do really bad on my channel and only like brow tutorials, foundation reviews and stuff like that do good on it. So I'm going to try this and see how it does. These videos take so long to film and so long to edit that it's just not worth it for me to keep putting these up if they aren't going to like do well at all. If nobody's going to watch them, it's just a lot of extra work for me. So I hope that you guys like it because I want to post these here for you guys. All right, that's enough talking. I love you guys and we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so to start off with, I put my hair up and then I'm reusing this bald cap that I used for the Thanos look. So I'm just wiping it off and then putting on like one of those knit um, hair caps and to keep like my hair back. But I reused that um, bald cap because those are, these are really expensive. This bald cap was like $45 and so yeah, I'm definitely going to try to reuse it anytime I can and then I'm like shaving the back of my neck because when I put the prosade on there it's gonna like really hurt ripping it off if it gets caught in my hair. Next I'm just using some prosade and I'm laying that down like on my skin. I let that dry and then I place the bald cap over it so it's like a glue. I'll link it down below so you know what I'm talking about if you're not familiar but the prosade, you know, it's like dried down when it goes clear. So I'm impatient and I just use this little fan to make it dry faster. And then I pull the bald cap down over it and lay it down smooth so that there's no wrinkles in the bald cap. And don't worry about the edges because we'll work on those in a bit. But I just go around and I do this on around the, my entire head, around the back of my neck. And on this side, you can see that where I reused this, like I had ripped it some by the ear. So I make sure that I pull that down really well to kind of hide where I ripped that. And it worked out pretty well. And I'm so glad I got to reuse this. I probably won't be able to reuse it again, but you never know. I might try. So this part, yeah, you can see that I pulled it down because you want to cut it like around your ears, but you want to make sure that you leave enough to where it's not going to like show your hair or anything and just when I took it off it just kind of ripped there so I pulled that down and it worked out pretty well and then I'm just gonna like finish the rest of this like around my neck and when you do your around like your sideburns just make sure that you don't get it in your hair because it will rip it out when you take it off and it hurts bad and then I just take like a little bit of the prosade and I go around underneath the edges to make sure that everything is how I want it and then I just take scissors and trim off all of the excess just get as close to the prosade line as you can and then I go back in with prosade again on just some little tiny pieces on the edges that I couldn't cut close enough to just to make sure everything's like laid down nice and flat and seamless. And then I'm going to go in with 99% isopropyl alcohol and this is why I like to use, this is a vinyl bald cap and I like to use vinyl over latex because the latex, you can just trim it and you have to add liquid latex to try to get a smooth and it's just like, like a lot harder. With vinyl bald caps, you can use 99% isopropyl alcohol and just a little bit on a Q-tip on the edge and it will like melt it into your skin and it looks so freaking flawless. I just go back and forth between trimming off the little pieces 
that I don't need um, that are kind of in the way and that won't melt in because they're too thick and then using the alcohol. Now I'm taking some Mayron 3D gel and I'm making the scars. Now this part was very time consuming and a little bit hard. So the 3D gel, you have to heat it up in the microwave. I did for like 20 seconds, but it comes out and of course it's really hot. So I pour a little bit out into a bowl and I let it cool some before I start applying it or it will burn. Then I just use the edges of this spatula. It's like a mixing spatula and I just use the edges to try to control where I put it because this is a liquid, it is gonna drip and I try to control the drippage, drippage as much as possible. And so I lay it down like on its like skinny side and I just like bring it down. I don't know how to explain this except to show you here so that it stays in the line that I want it to be in. I just use like the side of it. I moisturize my face because I realized I forgot to before I paint it and I'm going to add some more of that stuff on the 3D gel on my cheek to make more scars. But I also just want to mention that you like, you have to build this stuff up. Like I wanted it to look prominent so that it really looks like raised scars. But you just add a little bit at a time. You let it dry. It dries pretty quick. So you let it dry and then you go back and add more. And then his scars are kind of shaped like almost like in a tic-tac-toe kind of pattern. I mean, they cross like that. So I'm just going back. And this was really hard. You can see it's like dripping everywhere. I'm trying to catch it with the bowl that I put it in. But it was hard to control this here. And it you have to be careful because it will look like drips. And you don't want it to look like it's like a tear that's dripped down because this is supposed to be a scar. So I do take like the tip of the spatula to try to like shape it a little better and then on the very ends you'll see here in a second I take that spatula and I try to blend out the edges of it so it doesn't look like a big drip. I just used a reference picture of Yondu and I tried to place the scars where I saw them in the picture. I've watched the movie a million times but you really need a picture to go by when you're doing something like this and so I just am trying to perfect those. I'm trying to layer them up a little bit now that they've dried some and that's where I take like the tip of the spatula and try to blend out the edges so that it doesn't look like drips and it looks more like a scar. Now I'm using this airbrush gun like machine thing that Charles got me like years ago and I'm using water activated paints and I just like add extra water to them and I pour it in there and I just start spraying. I should hold it like back a little bit more but I didn't want to get paint like all over my chair and all over my backdrop and stuff so I held it kind of close but it does a really really good job of painting seamlessly and like I always do like a second coat because it will help with any sheer spots but this just helps and it goes so fast too like and then especially with my neck and stuff, water activated paints are really easy to wash off because they're water activated. But this airbrush machine gets it like in every single pore and it actually makes it really hard to get it on there. But I skip my ears and my eyes because I don't want to spray that all the way down into my eardrum. And then of course I don't want to spray it on my eyes. And I forgot to film the part with the beard but I just bought that off of Amazon. And I'll link everything down below. I'm just taking a brush to paint my ears and around my eyes. With the beard, um, it did come like a little bit longer. And it came with like a mustache part too. But I didn't want to use the mustache part. Because I didn't feel like he really had one. And I had to trim the beard a lot. Charles just came home for lunch at this point. I've worked like half the day. And that shows you how long. This look took me eight hours. So I'm just going and doing like a second layer of the airbrush paint and then covering my neck a little bit more so that when I put my jacket on you won't be able to see any of my skin. But this just helps to eliminate any patchy spots. And then I'm using a blue eyeshadow base on my eyes because my eyes do crease and water based paints are bad for creasing in, your, in my eye area. And then I'm using the Makeup Revolution Forever Flawless Ice Palette. And I'm using the dark blue shade in that to kind of go over that eyeshadow base and set it. And I felt like it was like a perfect match to the water-based color that I used. It's actually a water-based face paint or body paint. And I think I said liner earlier, but it's not. 
And I'm going in with the Dermablend setting powder because it just is a really, really good setting powder and it also kind of makes you look airbrushed when you use it. But I pack that on pretty good to set everything and I really have to pack it on that 3D gel because the 3D gel is very sticky after it dries and it will stick to stuff and in order to like paint it and work with it, you really need to set it. I set it like extra, like here I am putting extra on. I'm actually gonna leave that on for a little bit while I work on my under eyes. And for my under eyes, I'm doing the same thing as I did for my lids. So the blue eyeshadow base and then that Makeup Revolution ice palette for the underneath of my eyes, just to set the eyeshadow base. And then I'm going in with like a lighter blue shade in that same palette and I'm giving myself like some highlights and also trying to just, to just make the blue a more true to Yondu blue in my opinion. And then also use like the dark shade in that to contour with. But right now I'm just um, dusting off the excess powder and using that light blue over the scars and stuff to give it like more dimension and make it look more highlighted. And then I do the same thing on my head. And then I'm going to go in with the dark blue shade again. And I'm going to shade in between and underneath all of those scars so that it gives brings back the dimension. I mean, I worked really hard to get those and I want them to have that raised effect. So this is going to help me keep the raised effect. And so I just keep going around and working on this. The shading part takes a while and there's a lot of it. And I wanted to show you guys the process, so if this clip is longer, that is why. I also take some of that blue shadow to give myself some wrinkles, and then I go in with some blue, dark blue paint just to make it more prominent. And But I want it to actually look like wrinkles, so I tap it out so it's not so harsh looking. But I just looked at a reference picture and try to get the wrinkles where I saw his. So around my eyes looking crinkly and on my nose there. And then also some forehead wrinkles. And then also another cool trick you can do is do one of the wrinkles where the bald cap line is. So that kind of helps to disguise it a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to contour my nose to make it look crooked because his nose looks crooked or like it's broken. So I'm shading dark around there, but I'm like curving it. And then the highlight, I'm also curving as well to make it look broken. And then for the beard, I'm running some white through it to give it that salt and pepper look. And then I'm also going to go through it with a light blue to make it look more authentic to Yondu. And then I also have to go back in and trim it up some more. This beard was like a lot longer and I just trimmed it up to be in the shape that I felt like his looked like. And then I just go back in with more blue paint until I feel like I've reached the desired look that I'm going for. Now I'm just filling in my waterline with dark blue so that it looks like more authentic that I really am a blue person. Then I'm just going to put the fin on and trace around it because I need for like that scar tissue that is supposed to be around that to look good and to be exact. So I traced around it and now I'm going back in with the 3D gel. And again, this is another long process, but I do it the same way as the scars and I layer it up. So I add a little bit and I try to control where I put it by using the edges of that spatula. And I just lay it on there and then let it dry a little bit and then I add more. And I really tried to build this up because the scar tissue around his fin is supposed to be, you know, pretty thick, like pretty tall. And I need to make sure that it covers the edges of the fin. Now, the thing about this was I did have a hard time in the front because the angle that I'm at here... It just wanted to drip down like my forehead so I had to really try to control that and try to let the front of it dry some before I added more so it would kind of catch it 
and but that was that part was like kind of hard and I also made the front a little bit thicker and wider just because I felt like it would look better with the fin that I have and at this point Charles just got home from work it's like seven or eight o'clock at night that's what time he's been getting home and so that just shows you that I've really been working on this like all day long and you guys are just getting like the condensed version of it See, it was really hard to keep it from dripping down the front there. That part was really hard. But hopefully you can like learn from my mistakes if you decide to do this. And you can pull it off a little bit easier. And then I'm going to go in, while that's drying, I'm going to shade some more around my mouth and my jaw to make me look more manly and to give me like more prominent like indentations like him and then like that little part above my nose I feel like that was very yondu-ish and then once that dries I'm going to go in again with the setting powder and I'm going to set that because it will be very sticky and hard to work with and hard to paint if you don't do this step don't forget this step I layered it on pretty good and then I'm going to go back and do the same thing like I did with the rest of it and I'm going to use the light blue shade in that Makeup Revolution palette and I'm going to use it on top of that to kind of highlight the scars, the, like the scar tissue and then I'm going to go back in with the dark blue and shade around it to bring the depth and dimension back into it. And then here's me just trying on the fin to make sure that my lines are correct and it fits perfectly inside of them. And it did, so yay! Now I'm just drying off my teeth because I'm going to go in with like some Mayron tooth effect stuff. So I gave myself a couple of gold teeth. And then I need to, he has like some pretty prominent spider veins. So I'm going in and just creating some. And they're mostly like around his forehead there's some on his neck but mostly around the scar tissue where the fin goes and I want those to be pretty prominent but if I get them like a little too dark I just tap them out so that they look more authentic and also I don't think that I caught this part on camera I messed up on that spot I don't think I caught this on camera but the white specks I just took like a mascara brush with some white paint and I flicked the white specks on there because he does have those and then here I'm just putting some of that on my neck, some of the veins. I just tried to make it look as authentic as I could, and I used the reference picture. But all the pictures I could find of him mostly focused on this side of his head, so that's what I mostly focused on. And then in the picture, it also he also had like some dark spots, so it kind of like made him look almost dirty, like dark blue dirt or something. So I went and did that as well, and then I'm adding more of those little vein things. And then I'm adding some highlights to the wrinkles so that they look more natural and more like wrinkles and more pronounced. And then adding some of the white to the nose in a curved manner so that it will look crooked or broken. And then I'm using this Fenty lipstick to do my lips. And then I'm shading a contouring around the lips so that they look more manly. And then I'm using another Mayron Tooth Effects, and this one is the black, to make my teeth look chipped. And I know I got out of um, frame here. I'm sorry about that. But I just wanted the teeth to look chipped and crooked like his do. Now, this is the final touches. I've put on Charles's Star Lord jacket, and that is actually pantyhose. I didn't have an ascot or a scarf that color. So I just tucked the pantyhose down in there and 
folded it like that so you couldn't tell. Here comes the fin. Oh my god. And look at this. It's the finished look. How awesome does this look in the end though? Like it looks so cool. And there's my little arrow. By the way, I did sand and paint the fin and the arrow. So I love how they turned out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all. I will see you in my next one. Bye.